Hola mis amigos, como esta? Bueno espero. Okay, sorry. Studying a little Spanish, basically that means, hello my friends, how are you? Good, I hope. So this is a requested video. I'm using the shape poco to make a simple sign. So I'm going to try and walk through this from start to finish on how I do it anyway. So the first thing I do obviously is get my piece of wood that I'm going to carve into and I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to get it fairly close to the center of the workpiece. Not super concerned about the tape. And my mounting system is a little original, I guess. So, what I like to do after I get my tape on is I'm going to measure from the edge of my workpiece to a fixed point to make sure that it's going to come out level. So, for this, I'm going to use four inches on each end. And that's pretty darn close. Can't find my good Milwaukee tape. Big surprise. So now I'm going to use my super heavy duty, awesome, rigid cordless drill with a hyper lithium ion battery. Tighten down my hold downs. Just to make sure nothing squirms around while I'm cutting. And that's good to go. Then I'm going to take a straight edge, and I've got this old piece of metal here, which may or may not be the right size for what I'm doing, but I think we're going to make it work. Okay, we need to shorten this up a bit. No big deal, it's cheap. And what I want to do is go corner to corner on the workpiece as it lies inside of my hold downs. And I'm going to draw the first line. Then I'm going to go corner to corner from the opposite side and draw my second lines. Second line. And that's going to be pretty darn accurate my center of my workpiece. So now what I want to do is get my old crusty tape measure out again. Retrieve my pen that I thought I was finished with. And I'm going to measure between my workspaces. And here I've got 11 inches. I'm going to write that on the tape. And for the purposes of this video I'm just using a, um, it's just a little over a quarter inch of, it's like a pergo laminate flooring kind of thing. So then I'm going to take my width, which is seven and a half. I'm going to write that on the tape because I won't remember. So my piece is locked down. I know where the center is and this is important for me anyway. And I know what my dimensions are, 11 by 7 and a half. For the most part, I use Shapoco software. I should mention that the bit I'm using, the cutter, is this Bosch Precision Pro. And it's a flat bottom bit, quarter inch cutting area. And it's a number 85213MC. Mike Charlie. So once I've got all that information compiled, I'm going to fire up the old computator. And of course it says not connected. First off, my machine is off. I'm going to turn that on. You can hear all the lovely sounds. And I'm going to click on connect to the cutter. If all goes well, this screen should load. So I'm going to click jog next because the machine has not been initialized. I haven't really used this machine in 
quite some time. I've been very busy with life and other boring things. So once you hit jog, it's going to ask you to initialize the machine, click continue, and the Shapoko is going to run through its motions. It's going to find its boundaries, and then it's going to settle down. Once it's finished that, the screen is going to pop up, jog slash position, and you're going to want to click set zero, which is here and then clear all offsets which is here and then everything should show a 5.000 um, your X Y and Z axis and then click done now you're going to come to your jog position and this is where you're going to center your machine on your workpiece I always use a center. I think it's, in, for me anyway, maybe I just don't understand the lower left and so forth, but I like using the center of my workpiece so that I can accurately as possible place my design. So I'm going to increase my increments to fast. And that's going to cause, when I click on these diamonds for the um, X, Y, and Z axis, it's going to cause it to move fairly quickly. So let's come back over here to the machine. Let's zoom out just a bit. And I'm going to click on the diamonds. And I, what I want to do is get my bit right over the center of my X. So you can click and hold on the um, X and Y axis until you're pretty close to the center or your X that is then click your Z negative to drop your cutter down and that was just a bit far so now I'm gonna fine-tune my center and that's real real close. So now I'm going to drop my increments down to 0 0.01 millimeter and you're going to want a little piece of scrap paper and you're going to put that underneath your bit and your work surface and you're going to drop that down until it just touches the paper Okay, we're just touching the paper. You can see that it's resisting. So now we're all centered up and we're coming back over to the Shapoko screen now. And forgive my incredibly humble workspace. Okay, now we're going to click on set zero. And we're going to click on zero all. You're going to have a bunch of crazy numbers here for your X, Y, and Z axis. So click on zero all, and everything should turn to zeros. Once everything is at a zero, click done. You're going to come back to the jog position screen and click done again. Now it's going to ask you to load your job file. So what we're going to do is we're going to collapse this and we're going to start from carbide create on a fresh screen and we're going to go up here to settings so what I want to do is I'm going to remeasure between my hold downs which I know was 11 by 7 and a half just to make sure because you don't want your bit banging into things that it shouldn't So I'm going to set my width, we're going to do this conservatively, so I'm going to set it at 8 inches and my height, we're going to set that at um, 5. My stock thickness is, a, it's actually 280 thousandths, 
but 250 thousandths will keep you from running through it. Leave your um, selection here at top. Toolpath zero is you've got center left, top left, and center. Again, I always use center, and that's why I drew the X in the middle of that board. So I'm going to choose center. It's probably technically a soft wood because it's a composite laminate flooring, so I'm going to leave that alone. It's obviously a Shea Poco 3. The retract height 10 millimeter is excessive in my opinion for this, so I'm going to change that to 5. And then when you're done, click OK. You're going to be left with a, basically this grid is the size of your workspace. So whatever you can fit into this workspace should technically fit on your actual material that you're carving into. So I'm going to start with um, text. I'm not sure why that's thinking so long. Okay, it's because, you know what, my computer, the one I'm using for this, I kid you not, is like eight years old. The original CPU and the hard drive has been upgraded, but it's just like so dead slow. So down here at the bottom, you're going to see the word text, which matches the word text on your layout. So for this particular video, I'm just going to type in something silly, maybe, um, how about, hello YouTube. And then I'm going to click apply. And that's going to replace the text with hello YouTube. I'm going to put that pretty darn close to center. And the size is automatically set to three and a half and 0.394. So we know we've got a bigger workspace than that that we can we can play with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this 5.0, hit apply, and it's going to change the height on its own. Okay, and depending on what bit you're using, this is kind of important because if it's too small and you're using a large bit, it's going to make a mess. So you want to pay attention to that. Okay, so we have our Hello YouTube, and you know what, I think I'm going to change this font because I can tell you right now that with the bit I've got in there and this particular font, it's going to come out pretty messy. So let's look for something. Let's look at Book Antica. No. Let's look for Arial Bold. All right, let's go that route. So we've got our um, our width and our height. And you know what, I'm gonna go just a little bit more. Let's go to six. Hit apply. Center it. Because pretty much wherever you have this laid out is where it's gonna come out on your workpiece. Okay, and then I want to add a border. So what I'm going to do is try to remember how to add a border. Okay, unselect that by clicking anywhere blank, and then create vector. You know, someplace here, boy, I just can't remember. There is custom shapes, or I should say preloaded shapes. Let's see. Click on the rectangle. And you're going to hold down your mouse key. And it's going to make that box. So as you drag your mouse, it's going to increase the size of that box. Click your mouse again to make that box stop changing shapes and if you want to change it from a square you can click here to a fillet fill it whatever apply to see it chamfer apply to see it 
you can choose any of these and apply to see what they look like. The dog bone, the tea. So let's go with this one. And again, right, I'm sorry, left click, hold the mouse button down and drag it around until it's as centered as you would like it to be. Okay, up here in the corner, which mine is kind of off screen, you can click the snap to grid to turn it off and you can get it more accurate. All right, once you're happy with your design, choose toolpath. And whatever you've got highlighted is what the particular toolpath is, is going to represent. So at this point, I've got this dog bony looking thing highlighted. And I want to choose, you can choose contour or v-carve depending on what you're doing. Texture is kind of weird, takes a long time. And maybe that will be a future video. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose contour. Um, I've already got my bit selected. So the depth per pass, uh, the step over the feed rate and so forth is all preset. Now the start depth will be zero. The max depth is 0.394, which is obviously too deep for the material that we're using. So I'm going to change that to say 175. Make sure you got a point in front of that. 0 0.175. For your offset direction, I'm going to choose no offset. I don't need tabs. Tabs is if you're cutting something out and it's going to leave little pieces so that it doesn't get crazy and zing around after you've you know made your final cut through the material. So once you've got all this set, click OK and that's going to provide your first toolpath. You can hover over that and you can see that toolpath. So click on your verbiage which just caused me to move it or whatever it is you're designing to make your second toolpath. Same thing, contour. Leaving all this alone, no offset. We're going to change this. Let's make this 150. Let's make it a little, little more shallow. So we'll leave everything else alone. Again, we don't need tabs, and we're going to click OK. Now we've got both of our tool paths saved. So hopefully this bit isn't too thick for this, um, this text. It does take a little bit of trial and error, and I suggest you have a lot of scrap wood around to perform your trial and error. But um, we're going to go ahead and save this G-code. It always tells me to save it someplace crazy that I'm not really happy with. However, this time, surprisingly enough, I put it in the folder that I always use. That's a first, I swear. And we're going to call this Hello YouTube. All right, now we're going to click Save. That's been saved. Now we're going to open up Carbide Motion again and we're going to click on load new file. We're going to go to where we saved our file and we're going to find our file. Hello YouTube. And I went way past it. If I can't sing the alphabet I'm lost and I won't do that in front of y'all. Okay so here's our file hello youtube.nc so we're going to double click on that. It's going to show you the, um, the extents for X, Y, and Z. And you're going to want to click on Run Next. Click on Start. Don't be scared. A box is going to pop up and it's going to tell you to change your bit. We already know what bit is in there, so we don't have to change it. So what I'm going to do real quick is I don't want this tape interfering with the cutting procedure so I'm gonna get rid of this tape because we're finished with it our machine is zeroed we know our measurements are already plugged in so now that's out of our way so let's come back over here and to get this rolling we're gonna hit continue which is that little red key down at the bottom of the white box but first make sure your router is running my router is the DeWalt and I have it hooked to a separate switch so I can turn it on and off if things go crazy. Um, 
the RPM that it mentioned in the toolpath is pretty close to what I've already got set in here. So let's start up the router and it may get harder to hear me. So I'm going to move the camera back over to the machine and then I'm going to click on the continue button. And again, because I'm not real familiar with the font and bit combination, this may be a mess. But with a little trial and error, you'll be able to figure this out. So I'm going to click the continue button now. And the Shapoko should take off and start its thing. I guess it's worth mentioning that while the file is running, it tells you what line of code is running and also the progress in percent. When it's finished running, it retracts and goes back to your initial jog position. And I can tell you that if I was to use a small ball bit, this really would have come out super clean. But because that bit is so wide, it just kind of tore it up. So that's what I was saying about the um, trial and error for the bit size and font size. And I know there's a preview on the... Um, the Shapoko software, but trust me, that's not always accurate. It'll show you one thing and produce another and vice versa. So this is just basically a quick crash course, and there is some trial and error involved. So I really hope this helped you out. You have a great day. Talk soon.